All right, let's do this. Let's find some warblers and not the easy ones. A month ago, I presented the 11 easiest warblers to find in Maine. The link is right up there. This is the 12th easiest, black-throated blue warbler. These guys are relatively common in Maine, but they tend to be in larger patches of forest, uh, especially if it's got a lot of beech and birch in it. They also tend to be in the shadow areas, uh, away from the sunny edges of the woods. So unless they're singing, you might not even know they're there. Still, they were on 8.5% of the eBird checklist that we're using as a scorecard. Yeah, the scorecard. How we're ranking how easy it is to find these warblers in Maine. Using eBird reports from the last five nesting seasons, what percentage of the checklists included the warblers that we're looking for? In the case of black-throated blue, 8.5%. 11 warbler species appeared on at least 10% of the checklists sent in during nesting season over the last five years. That's the top 11. Now, we're doing the next 11. For instance, Nashville Warbler, number 13. Nashville Warbler was listed on 7.8% of the checklist sent in the eBird in June and July over the last five years. Why June and July? Because that's probably not migration. There probably actually are right there. Really, I think Nashville Warblers are more common than 13th place in the list. They just happen to be more common as you go further north. Uh, if you get above Bangor, they're kind of wicked easy. Uh, they'd like a nice mixed forest with lots of deciduous leafy trees, but also conifers, especially balsam fir. That's where they're happy. <laughs> I'm just about standing on a snapping turtle. This isn't a wet meadow. This is a turtle commune. Black Bernian warblers are nearly tied with Nashville warblers, coming at a number 14 on the list. You could easily walk right by that one. Worse, they have kind of a wimpy, squeaky wheel song, a little bit like a black and white, but rising. And many people would not even recognize what it was. If you think that's hard, try finding a Canada warbler. Less than 4% of all the eBird checklists mentioned Canada warbler. Canada warblers nest in wet, dense, damp areas where you would never walk in. Even if you hear one singing, they're still hard to get. No wonder it's at 15th place. Just about the same small number of people report northern water thrush, coming in at number 16 on the eBird checklists. They also like wet areas you would never walk into. Fortunately, they tend to sing loudly. Unfortunately, they tend to stop singing earlier in the season than most warblers. So they're down to number 16. They're not really rare. They're just difficult. And this is how you know I'm actually in the northern forest doing this. I get out of the car because I hear Nashville warbler and northern water thrush. And there in a rock, spruce grouse. Oh, and she's not being shy. She's being blustery. She's got chicks with her. Well, okay, uh, we'll let her alone. Whoa, I know I'm talking about warblers, but crossbills have been going over like crazy this morning. Mostly white wing, there was one red. At number 17, black pole. Black poles really are uncommon. Less than 3% of all eBird reports mention this species. In fact, it was just put on the state's endangered species list as a threatened species. It likes it so thick you couldn't possibly walk into it. You couldn't even push your way through the branches. Black poles tend to be easy on mountaintops because that's where the thick, dense spruce is. But they can be at lower elevations so long as it's got the trees they like. You can do all the fishing you want, it's probably not coming out. Prairie warblers are exactly the opposite. They like short trees next to open areas. They like sun, lots of it. I shot this bird behind the airport in Augusta, Maine. There's all kinds of them in here and I shot several of them. The reason it's so low in the list is once you get past this spot going north, they pretty much drop out of existence. It's a southern bird moving north and this is about as far north as they've moved. Number 18 in the list. Ah, another sign I'm in the northern forest, olive-sided flycatcher. 
At number 19, Palm Warbler. Really? Only number 19? I see them all the time. Well, I guess it's because they're a bog specialist and I like bogs. It's funny that a bog specialist should be named a Palm Warbler, but they're named after where they're found in the winter. That's a backyard bird in Miami, right out by the gas grill, under the palms. But in summer, that stuff, a bog. It doesn't even have to be all that boggy. As long as you're in the northern forest and it's got tamarack, cedar, anything that likes a damp moss. Besides being in places that are a little difficult to visit, it also has a rather difficult song. It's a sort of a loose rattly trill you could easily overlook. By the way, I'm doing this with Maine warblers because that's what I got, but you can actually do this anywhere. There are birds that are generalist, use a lot of habitat, they're going to be towards the top of your list. There are birds that are specialists, may lurk back in the forest or bogs or whatever and harder to see, they're going to rank lower in the list. Wherever you are, that's what's going on. And another thing about warblers in particular, some are better at going out and grabbing a bug in the air, some are better at gleaning along the leaves inside the forest. So the ones that need bugs in the air, sunnier edges, because that's where the bugs are. The ones that are gleaning deeper in the woods, harder to see, more secretive, that's where the food is. Number 20, morning warbler. This is about as secretive as any bird gets. Except in migration, they are rare in southern Maine, and there aren't many down east along the coast. It's mostly in northern and western Maine. They really like the timberlands of northern and western Maine because the harvesting leaves big open patches in the woods, and after three years it regenerates into brambles and maple saplings, and they love that. They actually sing pretty loud, but they're terribly secretive. It's hard to draw one in for a view. And even when you do, they're sneaky. They just sort of creep up on you. Only 1.4% of all checklists submitted to eBird in June and July in Maine included morning warbler. These last two are even harder. At number 21, my favorite warbler of all time, bay-breasted warbler. Four reasons they are seldom reported. Number one, they are northern forest boreal birds that like thick stands of spruce and fir. They tend to forage inside the tree close to the trunk where they are in the shadows and are harder to see. They're hard to pull out. They'll pretty much ignore anything you do. And they've got one of the weakest songs of any warbler, just kind of a black and white warbler type, wheatsy wheats wheats. You've really got to be tuned into them to notice them. Now, before we get to number 22 on the list, there are four other nesting birds in Maine that are so tough, I'm not going to get your hopes up. They are listed on fewer than one in 200 checklists in Maine. Wilson's and Tennessee warblers breed mostly in remote areas of Maine where they are seldom seen. Honestly, I see more of them in Costa Rica than I do in Maine. Blue wing warblers and Louisiana water thrushes also nest in Maine, but so few, to be honest, I've only ever seen one of each. So we'll pay homage to number 22, Cape May Warbler. It was reported in only one out of 160 checklists during breeding season in Maine. There are probably a lot of them heading through and on the way up to Canada because they're seen quite often in migration. Then they just sort of disappear into the northern forest. They're findable, but it's not easy. Cape May Warbler is a spruce budworm specialist, so when there's an infestation, they get more numerous. It's been a while since we've had a big outbreak in Maine. The song is unremarkable, just a series of high notes on one pitch. You could easily miss this one. My favorite warbler, bay-breasted warbler. It's the color of dark chocolate, milk chocolate, and cream. What's not to like? <laughs> 